Hi guys, so today we're going to go through how to create a simple bar graph in After Effects and animate it with a counter over the top. So the first thing we're going to do is open up After Effects and then we're going to create a new project and then we're just going to create a new composition and we'll call this bar graph or something useful. We're going to set the width to 1920 by 1080, the frame rate to 25 and 30 seconds will do us plenty here with a black background. I'll click OK. So next we'll come up to layer, we'll go new layer and we'll go new solid layer. Pick whichever colour you like. I'm going to choose this dark cyan solid and there's our dark solid layer and we can zoom in. So just deselect that layer. Now the first thing we're going to do, we don't need to import any shapes or any vector graphics. We're going to design this all in After Effects. So the first thing is to come up and select the pen tool. The shortcut key is G on the keyboard. We're going to place our first click. We're going to hold the shift key and then we're going to place our second click to the height that we want 100% bar to be. So I'll just select there. And then I'll hit the shortcut key V and then I can deselect that line. Now we can see that line's not particularly thick at the moment. So if we just make sure that the fill up here on the top option is set to no fill. So if we click the fill option, if yours is showing a solid color and just select no fill, which is the white box with the red line through it, click OK. And then the stroke, we can scrub this to the right hand side to increase our stroke width to whatever width we want our bar to be and this is how we're going to animate our bar. So we'll just set that to 100 pixels. Then we're going to come down to our shape layer and our composition panel, select the layer, hit enter, and we'll rename this to bar one, and then hit enter for that to take effect. Next, we're going to change the cap to the bar. So if we just scroll this down, we get scroll down contents, scroll down shape, and then scroll, scroll down stroke. And these options will open up here. And you'll see an option called line cap, which is currently set to butt cap. Now, if we change this to round cap and then we zoom back out, we can see that we now have a rounded end to our bar. So you can keep that as butt cap if you want it to be squared off, or you can change that to round cap to have a rounded end. Now, if we just collapse the contents down so we can see what we're doing, the next thing we're going to do is click add just here, and we're going to add trim paths. This is what's going to allow us to animate the line as a bar. So if we open up our trim paths and we'll come down and see an end stopwatch just here, it's currently set to 100%. And if we just scrub this left and right, we can see that that exposes or reduces the amount of line that's visible. And this is what we're going to use to animate our bar. So if we set that to zero, click our first stopwatch with our timeline at zero just there, that will lay down our first keyframe. And then if we come over to the time clock just here, and we click plus 50, that adds 50 frames, which is equivalent to two seconds at 25 frames per second. Then we can scrub the same stopwatch all the way over to 100% and it lays down our next keyframe. So if we just animate this quickly, we can see that now currently we've got one bar that extends to 100% over two seconds. So we're just going to highlight these two keyframes, right click, come down to keyframe assistant and click easy ease, and that'll just add a little bit more motion to the bar. Okay, so far so good. So we can animate our bar up to 100%. And we'll see how we can make that other percentages for different bars in a second. So for the time being, we'll just collapse the bar down, deselect the bar and come up to the text tool just here, which is Command plus T or Control plus T is the shortcut. And we'll select that. We'll just scrub our time slider across so we can see where the height of our bar ends. And then on the main preview pane, we're gonna click and then we're just gonna put placeholder. It doesn't matter what you put in here. I'm just gonna select one. Then we're gonna come across to our effects and presets just here. If you don't have this, if you come up to window and select effects and presets, this panel will open up on the side. And in our search function here, we're just gonna type in slider and we're after this slider control effect. So then if we just grab this slider control effect and drag and drop it on top of our text layer, which we've named one there, that should take effect. Let's just select this layer, hit enter again, and we'll change this to 100%. So we'll just name the layer 100% so we can keep track of what we're doing. Then if we open up the little drop down arrow just here, then if we open up the text drop down, and then if we see this little stopwatch here just next to where it says source text. Now if we hold the alt key and then press that stopwatch, and then if we zoom out a little bit, we can see that an expression box has opened up here. Now we're not going to type anything into this expression box, but if we expand out our effects control, which is what we've just added, we can see our slider control option. And if we open out our slider control option, we can see the slider with a stopwatch next to it. So we're just going to grab this little pick whip symbol here, the little curly swirl, and we're going to drag that over and we're going to drop that on our slider control. And we can see that now this expression has appeared and been filled out. So now if we come over to our slider control and we move the slider, I'll just zoom in and deselect this so you can see what's happening here. 
So if we watch the number, as we slide this now, the numbers change to reflect what's on the slider control down in the bottom left. So we'll just turn that back to zero for now. And if we come back up to our expression in our text layer just here, and we click in the expression here, we're gonna change this expression slightly so that we don't have any decimal points appear, and we're gonna add the percentage symbol. So I'll just zoom in over here. Now all you're gonna to need to add here, and just type this exactly in the same case that I type it, click dot value dot to fixed parentheses, and then I'm gonna put a zero in there, which means zero decimal places, but you can alter this number to reflect the number of decimal places you want to, to be shown. Then on the outside of parentheses, we're just gonna hit the plus symbol, put some quotation marks, and inside the quotation marks, we're gonna put percent. Easily you could put pounds, dollars, whatever you wanted inside the, the quotation marks here, but for our purposes, we're gonna use percent. So if we zoom back out again, and we click off of the slider, then come back down to our slider control just down the bottom here, and if we're gonna scrub this to the right-hand side and we watch the number, we can see that now it changes all the way up and down to still reflect the numbers on the slider with the percentage symbol at the end and no decimal places. So if we came back into our script and we were to alter this to two decimal places, for example, click that out and then alter the slider again, we can see that this alters to two decimal places. So I'm just gonna go back in and change that back to a zero in the parentheses. And then I can hit V for the selection tool, grab the actual text, and then reposition it in our preview pane to wherever I want it to be. Okay, so let's just zoom out. So currently we've got, I'll just deselect. So if we animate this, we've got two seconds, our bar expanding, but currently the percentage symbol doesn't go up to reflect the bar. So to make sure that the percentage rises with the bar, what we're gonna do now is come to our timeline. We're gonna set this slider to zero, hit enter and place our first keyframe by clicking the stopwatch on the slider at zero seconds. Then because we've added 50 frames for our animation of our bar, we're gonna come up and add the same 50 frames to two seconds to move the time slider along so that the bar's at its full height. And then we're going to come to our slider and we're gonna put 100 in there to reflect 100%. That will lay down our second keyframe. We'll highlight them both and turn them to easy ease. Now, if we deselect everything, zoom in so we can see, pull the time slider back to zero and hit spacebar, we'll see that the counter goes up to 100% at the same time as the bar over two seconds. Okay, so far so good. So if we just come over to our composition, select the 100% and just hit Control A and then hit U, that will collapse everything down just so that we can see what we're doing. And then if we select the bar layer and the 100% layer, so our counter layer and our bar layer, and just hit the T key, that will open up our opacity settings for us. And now we can place opacity settings for both of these layers at the same time. So with the both layers selected, we're gonna click the opacity stopwatch while the time slider is at zero. That will lay down a keyframe at zero seconds for both of these layers. We're gonna scrub that but for both layers down to 0%. Then again, we're gonna come up to the time counter here, select that with both layers still selected, press plus and then 50 frames again to take us to the same two second mark. This just keeps all of the time for the animation consistent across all of the layers. And then we're gonna scrub this time slider up to 100% at two seconds, highlight all of these keyframes across both layers, right click, keyframe assistant, and easy ease. Now, if we come back to the beginning, deselect everything so we can see what's happening, and then hit the space bar to buffer, we can see that the bar now extends up to 100% at the same time as the counter counts up to 100%, and the transparency opens up at the same time. So it gives it a nice, smooth, crisp kind of look. So that's our first bar going up to 100% and a counter counting up at the same pace. Now what we have to do, if we want to duplicate this for another bar, but at a different percentage, is highlight these two layers, Control C and then Control V, or Command C, Command V on a Mac. That will duplicate these two layers. And let's just quickly re rename the percentage layer so that we can keep track of it select the layer, hit enter, and let's type this in a 75%. We'll make this counter go up to 75%, click enter. Now at the moment, we can't see these if we scrub the time slider because they're directly over the top of the previous two. So if we move our time slider across to the right-hand side and then select these two layers and then hit the P shortcut key. So we've selected our two new duplicated layers and hit P for the shortcut key. That opens up our position control. And then if we just select the X axis control, which is the left-hand number here, and then we go plus and then we'll do 150, we'll see that that shifts it 150 pixels to the right hand side. And we've done that for both layers simultaneously. So it's a nice easy way to move both of these layers the same distance across to the right hand side. Obviously you could enter any number you wanted in here. Now if we deselect both layers, 
We'll come and select our 75% layer and just expand this arrow down. We'll come to our effect. We'll come to our slider control. And then if we just drag the time slider back so that we're at that two second mark, holding the shift key, remember, on the time slider, we'll snap it to the keyframe. We'll select that last keyframe that's currently set to 100, because remember, we duplicated this from the last 100% bar. Well, I'll highlight that and we'll change this to 75% and hit enter. And if we deselect, we'll see that that's now changed to 75%. So we'll collapse our 75% slider layer and we'll come to our second bar layer. We'll just expand that out and now we can alter the trim path setting by going to contents, shape one, trim paths. Again, make sure that we've got the last keyframe selected at two set on our timeline panel. Select the 100% and change that to 75 and you'll notice that the bar now drops down to 75% of the height of the first bar. Now if we wanted to reposition the 75% counter, we didn't want them all in line at the top, we can just hit V on the shortcut key so that we can select it click on it and then we can drag it around and move it to wherever we wanted so we could place it directly above the bar and deselect. Now if we come and drag our slider back to the beginning and hit enter, we'll notice that because we've set all of the settings up for our first bar and our first counter, so the opacity and the timings, and we've just duplicated that and then modified the parameters that we need to set it to 75% rather than 100%, we've done all of the legwork on the first bar. So we're just duplicating these layers and then modifying it to the percentages where we want it to reflect for the second bar. So we can effectively do this exactly the same for another bar if we wanted to. So we'll just reduce these layers down so we can see what we're doing. So we're just gonna select bar two and select 75%, Control C, Control V to copy and paste them. Then we're gonna hit enter on 75% and change that to 50% so that we can keep track of it. Open that out, go into effect, go into our slider control, select this keyframe, drag our time slider over so we can see what's happening and change this to 50% with that keyframe selected. So we're changing it, not laying down a new one. Then we can come to bar, open the bar contents out, trim paths. Again, select that keyframe, change that to 50%. And then if we select 50% layer and bar three layer by holding shift and hit the P shortcut key, and then we can move these across by another 150 pixels. Just check that that's worked by deselecting and pressing space bar. Looks good. So let's move our time slider across so we can see what we're doing. Grab the 50% and move that down. Hold shift to keep it in the same lateral plane. Pull back and preview. If we wanted to do one more, we can just select again now 50% and bar three, control C, control V, you get the idea. Hit enter, change this to 25%. Open up the effect, select the keyframe. Change that to 25, go to bar four. Open that out, go to trim paths, select the keyframe, change it to 25%, collapse that down, select the two, press P for the shortcut key, with them both selected, plus 150, then we can deselect, grab the 25% layer, drag that down, holding shift, drag it back to the beginning and hit space bar to see them all emerge. Okay, so at the moment they're all appearing at exactly the same time, but if we wanted them to be staggered in their appearance with maybe 100% appearing first and then, then the bars appearing at different times, we can do that too. So if we select all of our layers and then we hit U to expand it all out, it expands all of the keyframes. So, so we can see they're all happening in the same two seconds. So if we wanted them to be staggered and appear one second apart, that's easily done. So if we come back, make sure our time slide is back at the beginning, come up to our time counter, hit plus 25, 25 frames to add one second. And then we select all of the keyframes for the other layers other than the 100% and then they'll highlight in blue and we drag them along, hold shift and they'll snap to our time slider. And then with our time slider at one second, same thing again, we'll add plus 25 to add another second. Then we'll go this time to our 50% and above, grab those keyframes, move them across, hit shift, deselect plus 25 again, and then we'll just grab the last sets of keyframes, which is the 25% bar and numbering. And now if we drag the time slider back to the beginning, deselect everything and hit the space bar, we'll see that they're staggered in their appearance by a second. And that really is it, it's as simple as that. And from now you can pretty much build on it, you can change colors, you can add as many bars as you want, you can modify the time sliders to suggest any kind of percentage values that you might want. So I hope you found that useful. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe to stay up to date with all of the other videos that we're doing and check out the rest of the videos in the tutorial series for more hints and tips.